डे फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन फंडामेंटल ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ फंडामेंटल ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द पोर्टफोलियो सिलेक्शन इन द पोर्टफोलियो सिलेक्शन देर आर टू इंपॉर्टेंट थ्योरीज वन प्रपाउंडेड बाई हैरी मार्कोविट्स दैट इज कॉल्ड पोर्टफोलियो थ्योरी विच आर डिस्कस्ड इन माई प्रीवियस लेक्चर इन द पोर्टफोलियो थ्योरी द बेसिक प्रॉब्लम इज देर आर डिफरेंट optimal portfolios which an investor can make with different investors can make so for different investors there are different optimal portfolios and there are lot of data that is being required the other theory that is being propounded by the sharp in 1964 which is an extension of harry markowitz portfolio theory which was being propounded in 1952 right this is called capital market theory so the capital market theory can be traced to sharp that is sharp given given propounded this theory who published his paper in journal of finance in 1964 markowitz published his paper in 1952 and then an extension of this was being given in order to to overcome the limitations of the markowitz model this capital line theory was being propounded by sharp right so it extends markowitz model to the situation when a risk free asset is introduced in the capital market means harry markowitz model is based on risky assets the difference if i talk of the equity shares the different equity shares which you hold in your portfolio they have a element of risk involved right so markowitz model uh, extension is the capital market theory by sharp right so uh, sharp introduced this uh, risk free assets like say for example i can say that 10 year government bonds right so we which we call it sovereign bonds the the income which we receive the interest which we receive on 10 year government bonds are being considered as a risk free asset in india so if you are getting 5% or 6% uh, return on these 10 year government bonds right which is being issued by the rbi you may say this this is risk free return so the, the sharpe introduce the risk free asset in the capital market right and uh, he presumed that you can you can borrow and lend money at the risk free asset right you can borrow and lend money at risk free rate so under mark markowitz model theory the optimal portfolio of risky securities will be different for every investor right so every investor will have different optimal portfolio depending on the risk and return profile of the risk profile of the individual investor so if we introduce a risk free asset as i have just explained what is a risk free asset in the market which allows the lender to lend or borrow at risk free rate this problem of multiple optimal portfolio is resolved means at this risk free rate you can borrow the money you can lend the money if risk free rate is 6% so freely investors can borrow this money borrow money at 6% and if they have spare money they can lend it at 6% uh, also right so now let's first talk of before building up this model of capital market theory uh, by sharpe let's talk of the what are the assumptions because each model takes certain assumptions so so the sharp also has taken certain assumptions while de developing this capital market theory investors are mean variance optimizers mean variance means mean is the return and variance is the risk right so every investor want to optimize the risk and return combination so in market which mean they base their decisions only on the risk and return as in the case of markowitz model also uh, we expect one of the assumption of the markowitz model is also that the risk and return can be measured in each of the portfolio so here we are saying that decision of the investor of a portfolio is based on purely on risk and return right so there is no other consideration other than the risk and return securities are infinitely divisible right so whatever the money whatever the amount you want to invest this you can you can invest the money in the smallest say 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 for example if you want to invest 100 rupees right so you can invest 1 rupee in a particular security 99 rupees in other securities 2 rupees in one security 98 rupees in other securities right so securities are divisible that is the amount which you want to invest they are infinitely divisible 
there are no restrictions on short selling right so if you feel that an asset is overpriced you can sell it even if you don't possess that is called short selling there are no restrictions on so short selling you can make short sellings in the market if you feel that an asset is overpriced you can make short selling right so large number of buyers and sellers exist therefore the prices of the securities are not impacted by anyone that is when like like when we talk of the perfect competition in the market we say in the case of the perfect competition i am talking of the market structure in economics right so in a perfect competition there are large number of buyers and large number of sellers no buyer and no seller can influence the market price or no buyer and no seller is influential enough to influence the price or the supply of the market right that is it is the market forces which determine the price of the price of the uh, product similarly here we are presuming that there are very large number of buyers and large number of sellers so no one individual investor right or no individual investor seller is large enough who can influence the price of the securities right so there are no transaction cost and taxes this is also one of the assumption and normally in the practical life you have the transaction cost so when you buy shares when you sell shares it involves the brokerage cost although minimum but it involves some transaction cost right and there are also tax taxes that is being that is to be paid to the government right uh, while paying while making capital gain if you are selling the shares and we are making profit out of it either it will be short term profit or it will be long term capital gain but taxes are being paid but here we, it is being presumed in the capital market theory that there is no transaction cost and there is no tax no taxes involved right in buying and selling of shares there is a risk free asset which allows the investor to borrow and lend any amount at the same risk free rate as i said that risk free rate if i if i say in common parlance what what is risk free rate normally in india we say 10 year government bonds the yield the return which you get the interest which you earn means yield if you buy from the market the yield which you get on these 10 year government bonds huh they are called risk free because it is being presumed that these bonds have no risk the government of india gives the sovereign guarantee for payment of the money which you have invested right uh, the 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 value of the bond so so this this is the called risk free asset so it is being presumed that at risk free uh, asset which allows the investor to borrow and lend any amount at this risk free rate investors have homogeneous expectation about expected return variances means risk and covariances covariance means what is the relationship of the two securities in terms of risk and return so these assumptions is important to have a unique efficient frontier right so investor different investors have homogeneous expectation about the return variances and covariances right so this is this assumption is required to make an efficient frontier right so if the expectation of the investors differ in terms of these data points a number of efficient frontier would exist and complicate the problem right so as you can see this line is starting when you draw a line this line is starting from the y axis we are showing the return on the x axis we are showing the risk of the portfolio this line the line which is starting is not starting from the uh, zero this starting from a risk free rate of return and this line is a is a is a vertical line in the sense it's a line which shows the relationship of risk and return right so when a risky asset is introduced the efficient frontier becomes a straight line so this is a straight line which originates from risk free return on y axis right means it is not starting from where the x axis and the y axis meets at the point point of origin right it is starting at a say say for example if the risk free rate is 4% so on the y axis is starting from 4% right so it is a straight line which originates from risk free return on the x axis and is tangent to the original efficient frontier at point m so this is this line which you which you have you are seeing here is an efficient frontier and this efficient frontier is tangent to this capital market line theory line or we 
this efficient frontier is tangent at the point particular point m and if i name this point where there is tangency to this capital market line right that will be your efficient portfolio that will be a portfolio which which is which is a combination of risky assets and risk free asset so it original risk free return by vaxer as tangent to the original efficient frontier at point m so this new efficient frontier which is a straight line is called capital market line right as you are seeing here this is a straight line which is called a, cap, a capital market line so this capital market line is given by this equation expected return of the portfolio right what is the expected return of the portfolio risk free asset means risk free return and then it is the market risk minus risk free return divided by risk of the market huh? plus risk of the portfolio where expected return of the portfolio is i have already told you r is the rf is the risk free rate of return erm is the expected return of the market portfolio right so standard deviation of m uh, means total risk of the market portfolio standard deviation of p is the the total risk of the portfolio so by using this formula you can find out the capital market line uh, is given by this equation it shows a linear relationship between portfolio return and risk when you saying linear relationship means as the risk increases so is the return right so there is a linear relationship of risk and return every point on this sml right sml means the m is the is the tangency point s and l are the different lines right so which is called capital market line uh, every point on sml shows an efficient portfolio which is a combination of efficient portfolio m and the risk right so at the intercept of capital market line is the risk free rate which shows that if there is no risk the return must be equal to the risk free asset means if you are investing in a portfolio supposing you have a portfolio which is consist of all government bonds which is being i said which is being presumed as a risk free asset so if is a if if your portfolio consist of all those assets there is no risk involved which so the return which you expect will be it is equivalent to the risk free assets because this this portfolio is consisting of only the the government securities where the risk element is read and this government security gives you the return which is equivalent to the risk free rate right so your expectation should be that there is the return will be as per the no risk if there is no risk your return will be equivalent to risk free rate and as you take more risk your return will increase so the slope of the capital market line is which the market risk premium per unit of market risk means this slope of the capital market line which i said is a straight line this line it shows that each unit of risk which you take right what is the amount of return which you get out of it this slope denotes by that right so expected return is equal to reward for time plus reward per unit of total market risk that is a portfolio risk when you are investing in a portfolio what you doing you are you are imparting some of your money for a period of time so for sacrificing the 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 your money for a period of time you must get reward for some time right reward for that is called reward for money which is equivalent to i can say risk free rate right and as you take more risk it plus it means expected return of the portfolio is reward for time which i said is equivalent to risk free rate plus reward for per unit of market risk as you know in the market means if you invest in the risky assets your risk will increase so as you take more and more risk you your your return will keeps on increasing so your portfolio risk consists of two things reward for time and reward per unit of market risk so what are the features of capital market line so capital market line shows the return of the portfolio depends on risk free rate 
reward per unit of market risk and total risk of the portfolio right so higher the risk greater will be the expected return a linear and positive relationship between expected return and risk of a portfolio means there is a linear relation this capital market line shows that there is a real relationship of risk and return the portfolio capital market line originates from risk free rate and hence the intercept of capital market line the slope of the capital market is the reward of variability ratio right variability ratio means as as you take more risk as i have already explained right risk reward increases so capital market line is tangent to the original efficient frontier at point m which we call it optimum portfolio of risky asset which we showed earlier through our graphical presentation only efficient portfolios consist of risk free asset and portfolio m lies on the capital market line and capital market line is upward sloping because price of risk must be positive since investors are risk averse i have many times explained that risk averse means risk averse doesn't means that investor is not re take ready to take risk investor is ready to take risk providedly the investor is being compensated by by the return for which he is taking the risk means if you are reasonably being compensated for the risk which you are taking you are ready to take risk so that is basically so you must be compensated by the return if you are taking the risk so investors since by their nature are risk averse so it is a upward sloping capital market line the portfolio that lies in the on the capital market line are efficient portfolios and a combination of the efficient portfolios m which is the optimum portfolio of risky assets and risk free assets the lending or borrowing so simply what problem of portfolio selection how you do it so every investor will have, now have an optimum portfolio which is on the capital means there are there are optimum portfolios which are on capital market line the same optimal portfolio of risky assets portfolio m and a risk free assets it is a weighted weights attached to the, these assets which differentiate different portfolios means how much weights you assign to each asset class right so on the base of that you differentiate the different portfolios portfolio to the left of the point m includes the risk free lending and hence are relevant for rose more risk averse and conservative investors this portfolio is termed as lending portfolio or defensive portfolio right so the left hand side it shows that lending portfolio or, or defensive portfolio portfolios to the right of the point m includes and what is m time and again i have earlier showed you in, in a graph that m is the point where the, the efficient frontier the capital market line and the efficient frontier is tangent that point is called m right so this portfolio of the right of the point m includes risk free borrowing and hence are relevant for a less risk averse or aggressive investors right so what is aggressive investors means aggressive investors are those investors who are ready to take higher risk right so uh, say for example um, you are you are ready to take risk a young person a person who do In, in the option market, in the future market, normally these investors are very aggressive investors because they are they are they are really they are taking higher risk. The people who deals in the uh, put options, call options, future markets, right? So these are called aggressive investors. They are they are they are ready to take higher risk because they expect that higher return will be there. So they are less risk averse. Means less risk means they are they are investors who are. ready to take higher risk provided they give you higher returns so they are called aggressive investors so this portfolio is termed as borrowing or aggressive portfolio right an investor which does not want to have risk free assets neither lending or borrowing will choose portfolio m right the common feature of optimal portfolio is that they have the same portfolio of risky assets portfolio m every investor should hold the same optimal portfolio of risky assets and combine it with the risk free lending or borrowing to meet the risk return requirement right 
so this is about friends about the the theory of capital market line which was being propounded by the sharpe so what we do in the portfolio selection there are two important theories one is given by the markowitz in the markowitz model they take all the risky assets right so markowitz model is again based on this efficient frontier right and uh, this the other in the in the sharpe model which was introduced in the capital market theory right so sharpe introduced this risk free assets that is he assumed that an investor can buy and sell or, or borrow or lend money at risk free rate so by introducing the risk free assets the different portfolios that are possible that are large number of securities that are large number of um, uh, portfolios very large combinations the cumbersome process of up markowitz was is being avoided <coughs> and this capital market theory is a very pioneer work in the port, in the portfolio selection so in this way we can choose the optimal portfolio so after discussing this <coughs> uh, let me talk of something about systematic and unsystematic risk friends in the market there are two types of risk involved earlier also at some point of time i must have uh, referred this now <coughs> let me talk what is systematic risk means when you talk of the market risk of in the market it consists of two risk systematic risk and unsystematic risk systematic risk is the variability of return on stocks of portfolio associated with change in the return on the market as a whole that is systematic risk is alike for all the firms it is like market as a whole will be affected this is called like say say for example if the macro situation changes right if some geopolitical tensions arises this geopolitical tensions will will affect all the market the whole market right and it it will have the it will change the risk profile of the markets right so this is known as systematic risk unsystematic risk is the variability of the return on stocks or portfolios not explained by general market movements it is avoidable through diversification means unsystematic risk is basically company oriented say for example there are certain management issues there is a change of management and whenever there is a change of management the risk of investing in that asset increases because we presume in the market if the change of management takes place probably you are not sure in what is the thinking process of the new management how the new management will perform right or say for example there have been many uh, unsystematic risks suppose suppose these days crude prices are rising if the crude prices are rising so the all paint manufacturing companies like asian paint like burger paints and all these paints the festival season is coming people are consuming more and more paints right so paint industry is being affected by it the profitability of the paint industry get affected by the increase in the crude, crude prices because um, in the in the production of the petrol the the petrol is the is the important ingredients important in inputs so if the crude prices increases it may affect the other industry also but will affect the paint industry or in particular i will say the paint companies larger as compared to the other companies right it will affect more automobile industry it will affect more the paint industry so this is basically the company uh, specific risk involved this is called unsystematic risk so components of risk means systematic risk or non diversifiable risk means this this risk cannot be diversified as for the unsystematic risk is concerned this can be diversified if you hold large number of securities in a portfolio the unsystematic risk can be minimized right not unsystematic means i'm saying the portfolio risk can be not unsystematic will be, will be minimized but portfolio risk will be minimized but by diversification systematic risk cannot be uh, minimized to that extent by by which the unsystematic risk by unsystematic risk so systematic or non diversifiable risk is the risk which is caused by factors beyond the control of specific companies such as general 
factors in market gdp inflation interest rate if inflation increases it is going to affect the all all the all the companies like normally in the situation of inflation the the rate of interest also increases when the rate of interest increases the borrowing cost of the company increases so it affects all the companies and similarly interest rate increases it affects all the companies when gdp increases it affects positively to all the companies because the purchasing power of the people increases so when the purchasing power of the increase increases the companies will be positively affected by it right so these factors affects all the companies and cause variability in their return systematic risk cannot be reduced by holding an efficiently diversified portfolio therefore systematic risk is that part of the total risk which cannot be eliminated or diversified means systematic risk is very difficult i will not say uh, not at all but it is very difficult to to eliminate by diversification on the on the this part of risk averse arises because all the securities on on an average move in the direction of the market return if the market is increasing the company's the return of the company will also increase if the market is falling the return of the mark return of the companies will also fall because of this as i said interest rate gdp i um, mean inflation affects all the companies more or less same extent so market risk is the primary source of systematic risk of a security hence systematic risk and market risk are used interchangeably so with these words friends thank you very much basically in this lecture we talked about the capital market line or capital market theory propounded by sharpe right which is an extension of the work of harry markowitz model and i just referred about the systematic risk thank you very much